Welcome back. Uh, the stock on our radar is India Pesticides. It reported its numbers yesterday uh, and it was a good set. They saw their revenue surge 13%, EBITDA was higher by 24% and uh, we've seen margins expand as well after quarters of weakness. In fact, the stock is higher in an otherwise weak market. Dheeraj Kumar Jain, CEO at India Pesticides, is joining us now to discuss the quarter gone by and the way forward. Mr. Jain, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining in. It's a good showing this time. Margins have improved and it has come in after a lot of quarters of weakness that we've been talking about. You said this was led by volume growth. So what was the volume growth this quarter? And were realizations still under pressure and entirely it was driven by volumes? No, we have uh, volume growth of about 35%, madam, this quarter. And uh, but the revenues have grown 13 percent because the overall uh, prices of the products have uh, reduced over the years. And uh, but uh, there has been a good uh, margin increase. Okay, so there was around a 22 percent pricing pressure this time. Uh, almost about 20 percent uh, pricing pressure was there when compared to last year. Okay. Okay, Mr. Jain, when you uh, yeah. do you expect? Does pricing pressure to continue or do you feel that it is abated to a certain extent? And H2, do you expect pricing to be better? No, I think now the pricing are more or less stabilized now. And uh, we know that China has been very aggressive uh, in dumping a lot of products in India at very low prices. And uh, we have to accept that China would be there always. So we have to prepare ourselves to compete with China. And that is what we have been uh, trying now for the last six months. And we have been successful in uh, doing that. Uh, that's why th this is the result. And our efforts are being continued. And we feel that we will be able to maintain this and improve further in the coming quarters. So when you say maintain this or maybe improve this in the coming quarters, can you give us a guidance for FY25? What will the volume growth look like in FY25? Uh, if you're not seeing further price and pressure, if it remains stable, what will the outlook on margins be as well? Mar margins will slightly improve, madam. Madam, mar margin presently, what we have, EBITDA margins of about 17%, uh, it will improve almost about 18 to 19%. That's what oh. we feel in the coming quarters as well as uh, in the years ahead. Mr. Jain, um, yeah. in H1, uh, we believe your EBITDA margin is closer to the 14% mark, 13.7%. Uh, for yeah. FY25, you're expecting it to be in the range of 18 to 19%. So expecting yeah, significant... This, this quarter, this quarter uh, our EBITDA margin has increased to almost about 17%. And we increased little further increase in uh, EBITDA margin in the coming quarters. And what would lead to that improvement? Will it be better pricing? Will it be better product mix? Or will it be entirely value, uh, volume led for you? Uh, Madam, it, it will be a mix of these. What we are that, as I told you earlier, we are working on the process optimization of the existing products and our R&D team is working very rigorously on that. And we have been successful to some extent in one or two products. We have already done that. And in the coming quarter, we would be doing that for other uh, products as well. So that is how we will be uh, optimizing on our total production cost. And we mm. feel that at least uh, 2 to 5 percent uh, increase uh, uh, reduction should be there in our overall operating cost. Okay. okay. Uh, now, moving on, you know, you've commissioned an intermediate plant for backward integration. What is the cost saving that you saw because of that? It's something you just alluded to. And earlier, I believe a certain portion of this was actually imported. So, what has been yeah. the capacity utilization there? Uh, we, we, for that product, what we have introduced a new uh, fungicide, uh, we have uh, started making the intermediate also ourselves. And because of that, there will be a margin increase of almost about 10% uh, in that particular product. Okay. And uh, margin improvement of around 10% in the product. Uh, yeah. You mean to say 1,000 basis points uh, or will the general absolute EBITDA increase by 10%? Uh, no, the, the product margin, what I mean is particular product, uh, the total pro production cost will decrease okay. by 10% uh, because, because we are making the intermediate ourselves. And what is the capacity utilization of that intermediate plant? Uh, that capacity utilization is almost 70%, madam. Okay, and will you be able to scale it up to 100% this year itself? And will are you not reliant on imports at all because of this particular capacity? No, no, no. We, we, have, we have stopped importing that intermediate uh, fully. Now we are totally dependent on uh, our own manufacturing. Okay. 
Uh, you alluded and you spoke a little bit about pricing pressure and you also mentioned that uh, at this point of time it appears to have abated. Uh, now, number one, give us a sense of the export market. Uh, how much percentage of revenue is coming from exports? Uh, FI25 and what will be the mix in terms of domestic versus exports? And uh, specifically, can you talk to us about Brazil as well as Mexico? What is the kind of demand trends they're seeing there? Uh, sir, we, we are not very, very active in Brazil at present. We are, we are trying, we are doing some business through some of our customers, uh, but otherwise our export revenue is almost about 40% of our total revenue. And going ahead also, it will be same because this year, the domestic demand has been relatively better when compared to exports. Hmm. So we feel that uh, we, the new products, what we are uh, making now, they are more on domestic centric uh, products and few products we have developed exclusively for exports. Okay, so export will continue to be at 40% and your focus will continue to be in the domestic markets because domestic demand is better than export demand currently. Um, yeah. You know, the Hamilpur project as well is something that uh, the analysts want to know. Is it working at full capacity utilization? What are the uh, projections from this one, uh, say this year and the next year? Hamirpur projects is on uh, schedule, madam. We have already started making few formulations there presently. And our technical plant is under construction. And we will be going on stream in the first quarter of uh, next year. And uh, two more molecules have been already planned for this year, uh, for next year, which will be going on roll. Uh, and we would be having almost about uh, 60 to 70 crores of uh, turnover coming from Hamirpur project uh, in FI26. Wasn't Hamirpur project to be commissioned in the last quarter of FI25, uh, Mr. Jain? Is it delayed? A slight, it is slight delay because what happened, madam, one of the products what we, were, we had earlier thought of, uh, there was some technology issue and we have gone back to our R&D lab and we have, filled, we have retrofitted the plant with another product. So it is slight delay, about uh, two to three months. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain, for joining us and uh, giving us a sense of what uh, we can look forward to as far as the rest of FI25 is concerned. Moving on, as we slip into a short break, some exciting news for our viewers. Seize the opportunity to attend India's landmark economic event. Show us that you are a true CNBC TV18 fan by answering a simple question in our Super Fan Contest. Head over to CNBC TV18 social media channels to participate and get a chance to win a free ticket to the CNBC TV18 Global Leadership Summit. Hurry, contest end on 10th November 2024. Answer now and you could be one of five lucky winners.